Hello guys, it's Unders. So, we are looking at the CLA Mixdown and this is just going to be the tutorial video and the way for you to get your best sound out of this plugin and the best practices to use it. As well, I wanted to address the CPU usage of this plugin. So, let's get into that. Okay, so for this video, I'm just going to be using a beat that I'm working for for another project, which sounds like this. And I obviously started on this before this plugin existed. So we have this master chain here uh, that I had working on my bus. We've turned all that off and we've just got the CLA on the go there. So when you are playing audio into this plugin, just here above the left fader you have a little LED and the best practice the level it's after for that is this LED flashing green so if we play some audio we can see what's going on here and I'll, uh, I'll drop it right down and you can see the differences that happen and you can see that optimal point for it So for me on the mix I had here, we're going to be right around sort of minus five there. It's just tipping into the yellow at the peaks of the snare, which is what I want because I want that snare to hurt your eyes when it hits at full volume. And uh, that, that's perfect. So when we pushed it a little bit too high, we saw it obviously went into the red and it really started to drive the plug-in. Um, it might be a sound that you're after, but it's designed to be at this optimal point here where it's uh, tipping in the green primarily. Cool. So the next thing to note from here, we've got the meters. Now by default it's on GR, which is gain reduction. If you're not using the glue system here, you're not going to see that. You see if we introduce it here. Okay, we're experiencing around about a two decibel dip in the gain reduction there and it's being compensated for automatically by that particular slider. If we have it off, we'll see no movement. at which point it might be more beneficial for you to use the in, which is the input signal level. And you should really see some correlation with that and your levels in the project, depending on how much you've affected this uh, input and output here. And then out is obviously the output level. Now it might be worth monitoring those when you also introduce the gain and the drive especially. Potentially monitoring the out when you're looking at the treble and bass. For example, if we now introduce the bass and we push that right up. You can see that our output is now overloading, whereas previously it wasn't. Okay, so it gives us some monitoring options to keep an eye on what the plugin is doing. Um, output probably being the most useful, but input also being helpful when you are looking at the compression and definitely the in ratio that you want this plugin to be doing. Personally, I would go by ear because it's a flavor plugin and judging it by ear is going to be your best bet. But 
it is good to uh, have the option to check what you're doing and be sure that what you're doing is correct. Now these are also metered on the left and right in terms of these green LED meters and they correspond to the faders next to them so you can see the input is reduced and the output is going to read out similar to what we have on the VUs up here. And now the four sliders are relatively simple. The bass and treble is an EQ curve, which will be dependent on obviously which slider you're pushing. Uh, it doesn't stipulate what type of curves they are or the frequencies they are at, but we can dig in and find that out by using a frequency analyzer. And we're going to have a look at doing that right now. Okay, so we've got the frequency analyzer from Blue Cats and Computer Music loaded up here. And we've just hit play real quick so we can just see that's roughly the profile of the track. Now I've maxed out the bass and treble and they're both turned off. So we're, we're going to introduce them and we should see a significant boost around the peak area. I'm pretty sure they're both very wide curves. So we expect to see quite a lot of change here. We'll do the bass one first. So that was a huge bass lift there. We saw that really uh, grab sort of around probably up to 150 right the way down through 50. Give us a massive curved boost there. And obviously, we've boosted that the maximum amount. So it was going to push it up quite a lot. That gives us an idea of the range. So 100 hertz is going to be right around your kick drum range in almost all genres of music. Let's turn that off and now try out the treble. So that's a really wide curve. You can see movement there from right sort of around seven kilohertz up here, right the way down to one. So covering this whole spectrum here really, which is a, a huge curve. Like I expected it to be quite a, a big boost, like a pull tech style back sandal curve. Um, it may be boosting up here as well, but there's not too much content in there because I've gone for that sampled hip hop sound with like the roll off. Um, so we've not seen too much of an increase, but it, you can hear that it's pushing the highs quite a lot. Cool, so that's the EQ section of this plugin. So next is the glue now. Um, number one on the glue or flavor one seems to be the SSL uh, bus compressor relatively standard use there from Chris and I think we've narrowed down that the second one is going to be the focus right red compressor um, we had a listen in the previous video between the two it doesn't change much in the fact that this fader here adjusts the ratio and threshold of that compression depending on which one you are linked to it's like having this one slider linked to those multiple parameters so they work logarithmically um, depending on the signal that's going in there and giving you sort of the areas that Chris would work in and drive is then the input through the signal so if you think of it as the non-linear summer or perhaps even the slate virtual analog consoles they have the input and output control but then they also have the amount of drive that's being put in so how driven the desk's going to be so they're able to add those harmonics without boosting the signal into the red effectively and that's what this uh, slider here allows you to do and how much of that sort of flavor you want and let's have a listen to how Chris would ideally have this so I've got this set to the ideal input levels I've then got zero on everything which is where the plugin is supposed to be zero doesn't mean nothing's happening it's just the zero point to start working from let's have a little a b with this off and then on
that's quite nice and those levels are quite closely matched there and it gives that, that extra little bit of flavor it's a nice plugin it's a nice little idea if you want to get an idea of how it sounds on some other music i've previously done a video on this plugin um it's cla Mixdown. it made me smile you'll be able to find that on youtube i'll try and remember to link it above if you guys are interested in the plugin there is a link down below i hope this video has been helpful for you so far we're going to address one last thing which is going to be cpu usage so what we're going to do here in logic is put my customized bar on which should have a cpu on hopefully there we go and what we are going to do is simply enable and disable this plugin so let's press play and see how much of my cpu is being used and that is metered up here i will uh, zoom in on this for you and then we're going to introduce it and see if there's any significant spike So there was a slight spike there, maybe a couple of percent, but overall it's not something that I'd be concerned about um, when this is just placed on there from the offset and we're working with it. I have issues with uh, overloading my machine all the time anyway, and I often have to freeze channels in projects. That's not something I'd be worried about. If it was a much more considerable spike, like you can see with um, powerful linear EQs, that I might be worried about, but in this case it seems to be almost non-effective at all guys i hope this video has been helpful for you thank you very much for liking the video thank you very much for subscribing to the channel and thank you very much for your comments down below i shall see you on the next one